Chap, thank you. you. You just shared with us how you have approached the question of youth ministry, bringing both your faith commitments, your love of ministering to kids, and your sociologist perspective on how social scientists and social science techniques inform our understandings. You've had an amazing body of work that has been so influential throughout, uh, throughout youth workers around the country and around the world. Can you just share with us some of the seminal moments where you thought a, a, a body of work or something you wrote was a breakthrough for you and your understanding and what you want to share? Uh, seminal works. That's uh, I, I've got a, I've got a lot of words on papers. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Appreciate you saying the impact of the work. I began by, you would look at me and probably think this would be the case. I began by talking about sex and dating. You just look at me and figure, this is the guy that would know about sexuality. So that's where it started. I, I, I wrote a book called Next Time I Fall in Love, and I was so naive to the system I needed a sabbatical. I was working for Young Life that you had to have a reason to have a sabbatical, so I go, okay, I'll write a book. And everybody said, there's no way. And my wife said, no way. And I, I'd i never done it before, but I thought, well, I want a sabbatical, so heck yeah. And I thought, what can I do? And I developed a seminar uh, to try to help kids think about what's the difference between relationships where I'm actually ripping off others and relationships where I'm, I'm serving others in a healthy way. And I'm using First Thessalonians 4 as... Um, you know, don't hurt the other person, and that's. And then I built this book, and I didn't have a name for it. Neither did a, pub, a publisher actually went for it. But what do you want to call it? I don't know. Uh, and then Amy Grant was singing with Peter Cetera on the radio. Seminal moment for me. There's the title. Next time I fall in love. And I did a few books out of that, and a leader's guide, and a video, just to help people to think about sexuality. And actually, ever since that time, I'm really grateful for what the Lord gave me to think about relationships, and I, and I frankly like talking about that. I want to bring it back, even though it's been over 20 years, um, because I don't really like how we're not talking about sexuality with kids. It's not about sex. It's about our loneliness and longing for connection. That's probably the first. Then there were some programmatic books along the way that some were okay and helpful and others were okay. Um, then when I got the sabbatical to truly study where kids are and to use the doctoral research that I had and the training I had, that's where hurt started. I didn't go into this thing wanting to say kids are hurt. I went in with this search methodology that basically said um, there's three kinds of kids. There's kids who are at risk, there's kids who are superstars, what they call exemplars in the literature, and there's normal kids, whatever that means. And after three weeks of being in there, before I was going to write the book, I had the contract, though. I realized that's not the right category. Baker's going to hate me because the at-risk kids are a little more honest, actually, about their pain than anybody else. And sometimes they may be healthier in some ways. And then those, those superstar kids, I was beginning to look in their eyes and hear what they had to say about uh, it's a little more difficult to keep up the pretense that I'm the great athlete, I'm the wonderful person, I'm an amazing scholar. And then all those, all those kids in the middle, uh, which one teacher actually called middle kids. I realize that every one of the young people that we work with, this is what's important for anybody doing youth ministry, every individual kid has the uniqueness of a story and there's wounds that are attached to the uniqueness of that story. Whether it's from a little league coach that yelled at them, and we say that's sim stupid but they receive trauma. And you look at the work on trauma, significant. And so, in other words, don't be fooled by the outside. That's what Jap learned in the process, that there's a story there and there's pain there and there's fear and insecurity there for all of them. So all the stuff I've written really is mostly my own journey of learning as God has led me. It's been a privilege to write. I'm grateful that people read it. But really the key of my work is to try to continue to ask the question, what does it mean to truly care for kids in the name of the one who has come, Christ.